of a scary dream. Now for the news in details. Lebanon's ambassador to India, Dr. Ravi Nash, on Sunday condemned Israel and termed its operations in Gaza as ethnic cleansing and mass killing. He also appealed to the Indian government to put more pressure on Israel. He said India is a peace-loving country. India has a big role in the international community. He further called for more India's involvement to put pressure on the Israeli side to stop the Israel and Hamas conflict. happened on October the 7th is not, I mean, this is not the, 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 um, uh, the, the issue that ignited the war. The war uh, has been on Palestinian for ages. Now coming to my, uh, my assessment on the uh, situation, of course it's uh, horrible. Uh, the, uh, the Israelis are, uh, are carpet bombing uh, Gaza. They are shelling. Uh, hospitals, schools, uh, homes. So uh, the situation is really unbearable and unbelievable what's going on there. It's genocide, mass killing from the Israeli side. The problem is Israel because everybody in the world, every, every nation, every state in the world, they, they support the two-state solution. Only one state that refuses this solution, which is Israel. And unfortunately, Israel has been treated like above all norms, above all laws. <clears throat> and uh, that's why, I mean, we, 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 uh, we don't see now a Palestinian state. Given the, uh, uh, the fact that the societies in the Middle East are so much interrelated, uh, that we consider ourselves as the Arab uh, race, are, I mean, one, one family or one people, so uh, what, what, uh, what hurts a Palestinian would hurt a Syrian, a Lebanese, and every, every Arab. So uh, given this fact, and given the fact that the, the human loss is unbearable, uh, what we have seen in, uh, in Gaza is genocide, is ethnic cleansing from the Israeli side. So uh, there is possibility, of course, of escalation. But having said that, again, our government is doing all its best not to uh, involve Lebanon or not to drag Lebanon into this war. Uh, we are not interested in war, but obviously Israel is interested in, in war. That's why they kept provoking uh, Hezbollah and provoking uh, the situation by uh, bombing uh, homes in, in southern Lebanon and uh, killing civilians. We have lost, we lost uh, journalists in South Lebanon by direct shot from the Israeli side. The problem, like I said again and again, did not start on October the 7th. The hostages are in Israel, more in, in, in thousands. Uh, the, uh, the, the crisis has been always there because of the occupation. So the, the original sin or the, the root cause of all problems is the Israeli occupation. Once this is left, is lifted the, the, and the Palestinians have their land and their statehood, then the, the, the crisis will be solved. And the solution is simple. It's easy, two-state solution. India is a peace-loving country. India is a big role player in the, uh, in the international community. They, have, uh, they are rising power and they have lots of responsibilities uh, because with, with this uh, promoting themselves, uh, I mean, they are a uh, peace-loving country and they do have uh, lots of things to, to do with this crisis. Uh, of course, they, uh, uh, they are in contact with, uh, with the leaders on, in, uh, in our region, uh, but we also call uh, for more involvement, for more pressure from India on the Israeli side to stop this madness. So you said there has been a conversation between two. Uh, has there any been conversation between Lebanon and Indian uh, officials regarding this conflict? We are in contact with here. Our embassy is in contact with the Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, and uh, yes, I mean, this is a channel between Lebanon and India. But there hasn't been any direct or bilateral uh, contact uh, from, uh, from Indian official to with the Lebanese official. But yes, we are in, in, in uh, continuous uh, cooperation and coordination with the Indian side. 
Moving on to the next news. Reacting to Congress MP Digvijay Singh's remarks amid the rift allegation between him and State Congress Chief Kamal Nath, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan attacked the Congress. The public is seeing all of this. Why would the BJP spread rumors? Kamal Nath ji himself asked the Congress workers to tear Digvijay Singh's clothes. Madhya Pradesh CM Chauhan said while speaking to ANI in Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal. The Kapra Far politics is going on within the Congress party. Now they are trying to cover it, he added. हमने कब कहा कि दिग्विजय सिंह जी और कमलनाथ जी के बीच में अनबन है आप ट्वीट करके बता रहे हो कि अनबन नहीं है भाजपा भ्रम फैला रही है भाजपा भ्रम क्यों फैलाएगी जनता देख रही है टिकट वितरण को लेके अनबन हुई और कमलनाथ जी ने खुले आम कहा कि कपड़े फाड़ना है तो दिग्विजय सिंह और कांग्रेस कमेटी उसको अप्रूव करती है तो वर्चस्व की लड़ाई और बेटों को स्थापित करने की लड़ाई ये तो जग जाहिर है इसमें भारतीय जनता पार्टी कहां से आई अब अपनी झेप मिटाने के लिए ऊपर से पॉलिश कर रहे हो कि भाजपा भ्रम फैला रही है कमलनाथ जी भी कुछ भी कहते रहते हैं कह दिया भारत भाजपा को बेरोजगार कर दो अरे हमारे लिए राजनीति कोई रोजगार का माध्यम थोड़ी है राजनीति हमारा धंधा नहीं है कमलनाथ जी हम रोजगार के लिए राजनीति ही करते हैं रोजगार के लिए राजनीति करते होगे तो आप करते होगे आप कारपोरेट जगत से आते हैं आप अरबपति हैं आप सेठ हैं आपका काम करने का स्टाइल अलग है जनता से आपको कोई लेना देना नहीं है आप गांव में नहीं गए कभी गांव की गलियां खेत खेत की पगडंडियां जनता जनता से आपका कोई वास्ता अरे प्राकृतिक आपदा भी आप आती है तो कहते हैं मैं वहां नहीं जाता और मैं अगर जाता था तो कहते थे ये टूरिज्म कर रहे हैं ओला टूरिज्म इस तरह की तो ये बात करते हैं तो ये राजनीति रोजगार का माध्यम आपके लिए होगी भारतीय जनता पार्टी के लिए सेवा का साधन है हम सेवा के लिए राजनीति At the protest over the Israel Hamas war with the message Stop this genocidal aggression on Gaza. In the presence of Kerala CMP Narayi Vijayan, party leader Sitaram Yechuri says the whole Central Committee has decided to protest today, demanding an immediate end to this barbarity that is being done by Israel in the Gaza Strip against the Palestinians. Till now, the figures show that. Immediate end to this barbarity that is being. that is being done by Israel in the Gaza Strip and against the Palestinians. Till now, the figures that have been officially put out, bombed under the rubble, how many bodies are there, that is only a guess. I mean, this is inhuman barbarism, that what we are seeing now, and this must stop and must end immediately. The United Nations General Assembly resolution calling for a humanitarian pause must be implemented. by Israel, by the world and all the allies of Israel. The entire imperialist world is standing behind Israel in this barbarity. And this barbarity is such that it only, I mean, we are, one can only recall or recollect what Ravindranath Tagore once said, give me a voice of thunder, give me a voice of thunder that I can hurl imprecations upon this cannibal who space neither woman nor child. This was Tagore's powerful stirring call against these sort of atrocities and that is all we can recollect now. And this whole, whole justification being given in the world that this is not against Palestinians, this is against Hamas. It is exactly similar to some sort of situations that we have faced in our country. We'll now take a short break. We'll be back with more news. Don't share plates with an HIV infected Kissing person. can transmit HIV. Mosquito bites can spread HIV. HIV can be passed HIV. through air. Don't believe the misconceptions of HIV. 
Stay informed, stay safe. Welcome back. Moving on to the next news. Multiple explosions at a prayer meeting of Jehovah's Witness believers at a convention center jolted Kerala. At least one person was killed and 36 were critically wounded in the explosion in Kalamaseri area. Soon after the horrific incident, HM Amit Shah spoke to Kerala Chief Minister P. Vijayan and took stock of the situation. An eight-member NSG team, including an officer, Home Minister Direction reached a spot for investigation on the explosion. Meanwhile, Kerala police suspected improvised explosive device behind the Kerala blast tragedy. Kerala DGP informed that 36 injured persons were undergoing treatment in various hospitals in the district. Meanwhile, the explosion triggered a political row as BJP trained guns at Kerala government. Kerala CM Pinayari Vijayant has vowed thorough investigation after the fatal incident. Today morning at 9.30, 9.40 a.m. approximately, there was an explosion in Zamra International Convention Center, Kalamashiri, in which one person died and 36 persons are undergoing treatment as per our information. In that convention center, Yoha Witness Regional Convention was happening and all our senior officers including the commissioner of police and others are at the spot they are investigating the matter our uh, additional dg law and order is already on the way he will be reaching soon and myself will be reaching the incident place shortly and we are examining the all angles and we will find out who is behind this and we will take very stringent action at the same time, I would request everyone to maintain peace, remain calm and I also request that no provocative posts or hate posts should be posted on the social media. If anybody is doing such thing, we will take very stringent action against them also. Thank you. Preliminary, preliminary investigation shows it is a IED device and we are examining it. Is there any terror angle? At this stage, I cannot tell anything. Only after investigation, I can confirm you the details. Thank you. Sir, so far, I don't have any information. Thank you. Nobody spoke to me from the MHA. Going there, I will be going there right now. Sir, okay. Special team is there? Special we, we will be constituting a special team for this. Today itself. Today. Today. After I reach this spot, we will constitute a special team. The last few years, sadly for Kerala, has seen the growing rise of a lot of fundamentalist organizations and a rise of a lot of organizations that have very extremist, radical Islamist thoughts. Right now, Kerala is ruled by the Communist Party and the Congress Party and the Muslim League are, both of them are two parties that are two prominent opposition parties. All three are part of this National India Alliance and the three parties are competing with each other to grow, to support these radical extremists for their narrow vote bank politics. The PFI is a banned organization in India. But Kerala, we see a lot of open cells of the PFI. And once the conflict started in Israel, we are now seeing the dangers of what exactly these radical ideologies can do. Because in the last few weeks, we have seen many of these rallies that are organized by PFI, that is a banned organization that is openly supporting many terrorist organizations across the world. And this is shocking. Yesterday in Kerala, a terror leader who ironically and shockingly two weeks back was addressing a crowd in Pakistan where he called for a global jihad 
and yesterday in Kerala he was addressing a massive massive crowd in Kerala virtually all this is shocking incident of a bomb blast in a prayer meeting of uh, the Christian community in Cochin is a shocking incident uh, it is uh, disturbing to note that Kerala is becoming uh, a place where such incidents are happening which is considered to be a terrorist act. The Home Minister has already spoken to the Chief Minister of Kerala. I have also uh, had a telephone call with the Chief Minister. The central agencies have already started the inquiries regarding this incident and I am sure that they will uh, go to the details of the incident. For culture and tourism, KJ Alphonse say that Kerala is in the grip of terrorism. I have been telling that both the left and right government in Kerala are trading on the part of extremism, he said. He further added that India has made it very clear that it does not support terrorism in any way. I think it's an extremely serious affair. Uh, I'm told there was something like 2,000 people out there in that convention centre and uh, there was a multiple blast supporting terrorism. Okay. I mean, look at the latest um, incident in the Middle East where both the left and the right, irrespective of political affiliations, is taking taken one side and completely absolving the terrorists of their responsibilities. I mean, this has been happening in Kerala for a very long time. The largest number of ISIS recruits are from Kerala. It is a, it is a crucible for all extremist activities in the country. And of course, it all started quite some time back when, you know, a hand of a college professor was chopped off and the, and the college establishment did not have the courage to stand up with him. And so all this has encouraged the extremist elements who have become um, basically terrorists. And today, Kerala is in the grip of terrorism, clear. The Prime Minister and the government is very clear. And any thinking person is very clear. We cannot support extremism, terrorism in any way. Very clear. I mean, that is the bottom line. And the rest starts only from there. The country has been accusing Hamas of using civilians as human shield to protect themselves. Israeli Defense Forces have been sharing different videos, photos, audio clips to expose Hamas. Recently, IDF shared a graphical representation illustrating Hamas alleged headquarters. According to Israel, Hamas has its hideouts in places like schools, university, mosque and hospitals. Israel has tightened its blockade on Gaza and people are isolated with a telephone and internet blackout. IDF even shared video of its ground offensive against Hamas. The war between Israel and Hamas has been raging and thousands of both sides have lost their lives. Gaza health authorities say over 7,500 Palestinians have been killed in the campaign. On October 7, an assault by Hamas killed 1,400 Israelis in the deadliest day of the nation's 75 victory. שמטרותיה ברורות. השמדת היכולות הצבאיות והשלטוניות של החמאס והחזרת החטופים הביתה. Israel continued to step up its ground operation in Gaza as its conflict with Palestine entered day 23. Israel Defense Forces struck numerous major targets of Hamas, killing its top commanders. Amid the ongoing aerial assault on Hamas, PM Modi spoke with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi on the counter-offensive. Both leaders exchanged views on continuing global efforts to rush humanitarian aid to war-ravaged Gazans. Taking it to X, PM Modi said that both leaders shared concerns over terrorism, loss of civilian lives amid the ongoing conflict. The two leaders also voiced satisfaction over the progress of bilateral relations, strategic partnership between Egypt and India. 
Over the weekend, a total of 34 trucks transported much needed supplies, including food, water from Egypt to Gaza via Rafah crossing. Earlier, the humanitarian aid sent by India for the people of Palestine arrived in Egypt on October 22. The war between Israel and Hamas has already claimed thousands of innocent lives, leaving several injured. Thousands of demonstrators railed in different cities in Europe on Saturday to show support for the Palestinians as Israel's military widened its air and ground offensive on the Gaza Strip. In one of the biggest marches in London, aerial footage showed large crowds marching through the centre of the capital to demand the government of Prime Minister Rishi Suna call for a ceasefire. The demonstration was organized by the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, with supporters waving Palestinian flags and some even carrying effigies of dead babies throughout the protest, which was due to end outside the Houses of Parliament after passing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Dowing Street office. That is all we have for this bulletin. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV.